My name is Alessandra. Yeah. I start South Martin. That's when I start in the streets work. I'm still in the street. Before the law and after the law. Before the law was okay with the sex workers, we are all like things are things were really normal. Now after the law, things are really going down. And it's not doing well for us. Big, big change. Like before the law was like when uh, when the, the the police caught you with a customer on the streets like you having things to do with your customer and it was against the law that it was only the girls that would take to the take to the police station and after then they would free him. But when the laws changed that if the court clients with the sex worker it should be the consequence to the client that you will pay a sort of amount, you the amount like one to five. So they are they are they are all scared about this very law and they are free to come to the street and they do not does it. They do come to the street anymore. They are afraid about the law. And we are losing customer, we are losing it. So we don't make money like the way before. So it's like we go to the street and stay and come back like nothing. Normally, when they come with their cars, they say, "No, I wouldn't like you to sit in my car because the, the police they are around. If they caught me with the sex worker, uh, I'll pay big five to this law. So the law is against us. We are afraid. So we have to manage what we got. We don't want us to sit in the car. Some go and park their car very far, and they will come with. They will walk towards us and say, "Okay, would you like to come there? Come like we." Now we do it more secretly than like before. We go to a hidden place, like dark place, parking. That there's no a uh, lot of people. There's no car coming in, so we actually just walk to some secret place, just like that. That's how we do it now. I'm trying to hide my customer and I don't know what the customer has in his mind. I don't know if it is good or bad. So it's my own risk by taking it far away from where people can hear, hear our voice. So the question is just like 50-50. Yeah. It risks my life to take them far, but in me, I'm always like, observing it might happen like this, it might happen like this. So I'm always like thinking, thinking, thinking before anything I bounce I back I bounce back. So that is how I do it now. <laughs> I don't take customer because I need money like that now. Because I don't want to get myself into trouble. Earlier it was they were taking clients like sixty euro for sex and when they want to do that peep we do it we take forty euro. So now the big difference is the big difference now, the customer cannot even pay 50 euro. So now the price 30 euro, no more, they pay 20 euro. Like so you can see there's a big difference. What I think is that when, the, when you go out for, you go out for making money and you see there is no, there is no, they are not responding to the price you are giving them. The 60 euros said, no, ah, it's too much to do. So this is what I have. So we have to bring down the price. The same, I understand that they are afraid of the police and they don't, they wouldn't like to take the risk of getting called by the police and because of uh, because of the sales worker and it's, it bring a lot of trouble to, his, to him and his family. Let's, say, let's assume. So when he talks, talks or no, I don't have, this is what I have. So. I have to the I have to take the offer because uh, that is what I can and <laughs> to just have something to put on my table. Yeah. Sometimes they will ask for their money back. Yes, they treat us like that. Give me back my money. You have to give them back the money. I don't mind the time I waste with him. I don't mind he have taken my they have seen my body or whatever to avoid the problem. Because when it comes to the police, you have to go to the police custody, you have to make a lot of statements, you have to identify the person, and you too, you will not be safe. It's by, the guy might be around or he might have friends that will come after you. 
after the police case. So, so we all have to be careful. The men, the guys, let's say the clients, they are more angry with us. They are, they are, they are, they are not, um, they are not happy with the law. They are no more. They don't feel more comfortable with it. They still not in the street. Is like is like a threat to them. So, if I have to go to this guy, I might I might find myself into trouble. So I think that is what I, I I'm reasoning for the moment. But I don't really know why they are doing that. When I came to Europe, so normally it's not easy, but along the way, so I went to meet the to lay complaint to the police because it was somebody that brought me here. So I I went to the police and they, I laid uh, the complaint. I don't want to do the street work. So um, and the, the person that brought me here, I, I, I there's no way for me to pay pay him. And uh, in Europe, you cannot work without no documents. So when I laid the complaint to the police and uh, the police take the statement, everything, so they took me, they called the association. So later on, they, they, they asked me to go to Prefecture. So from there, they give me my one year document. So I was with the one year document over uh, since 2016, December. So Fetu gave me my document. So since then I'm be using my document. I even work, I've renewed the document over three to four times. They so they sent me later that uh, because uh, they could not find the person that brought me here. So because of that, they want to take the document for me. So I was very sad because I don't know why they want to take my document for me. After many years, after I've wasted my time over many years, they said they want to take my document from me. The, the consequence they stop for me for my paper is that because if if they stop it, uh, I it, it will be very difficult for me. It will be very hard for me. I cannot I can't work anymore because I'm working before. I can't work anymore. I can't feed. I can't uh, have even place to stay. There's no way. So it's very difficult if they if they stop my document. It's very difficult for me. Now I was uh, recognized because of this uh, human trafficking because I took a risk and the, 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 when I went to lay the complaint to the police, normally they, pro they promised to protect me, they promised to, to be with me, that I should not be worried that nothing will happen to me. But right now they have collected my documents away from me. What do they want me to do? If the, the people that brought me here, if they get to know they see me, I was in big problem. So I don't know what to do because the police promised to protect me and to guide me. But right now, they ask me to go. I don't have any place to go. So yeah. The risk if I go back to Nigeria, the people, uh, the person that brought me here, he have family in that, in my village. So anything that makes me to go back to Africa, I'm not safe. My life is, is seriously in danger. I'm really scared. They always called my family. They called my, my sister in Nigeria, the, 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 the person that, uh, that brought me here gave my number to the, he gave my, my sister's number to, to uh, somebody in, in Nigeria. So the person called my sister, was threatening my sister, if I don't pay their money, they are going to kill my sister, they are going to kill even my children. Even right now, I'm very scared because of my children, because my children they are in Nigeria, they are with my mother, so their life is not safe anymore, so I'm very scared. I'm doing this uh, two process. I'm doing this uh, uh, Aduro process also. So when I the first time I went for um, uh, offer and the, for my interview. So after then they asked me to go that they will send me results. The story I give to the police was the same story I sent to offer. When I go for recu. The, uh, I give them everything, even my lawyer was there, they were just asking me different story. They asked me if I have my, uh, when, when I gave the complaint to police, what the police did about it. I said the police, they gave me, 
They they asked me, they called the association, the, the association took me to Prophet 2. So then Prophet 2 gave me my one year document. So they asked me if I'm working. I told them, yes, I'm working. Then they asked me to bring the the doc the card from there. Then I give them my document, the card I gave them. Later they, they asked me to go that they will, they will send me a letter within uh, 15 days, 20 days later, they send me a, a, a letter that they reject me, they will not give me my document, just like that. The only thing they told, they said that the person they could not find, the person that brought me here, that is what they told me. The only thing I, I have to say because uh, normally they promise to protect me, normally they promise to to be with me, to protect me that I should not be afraid. That's why I went to the police to lay the complaint. But right now, everything I don't, I don't really understand. I'm really scared. In view of human traffic, I came to do prostitution. Um, I have so much attack through my mother, both physical and spiritual. I'm not safe. I'm not safe, so I went to police to report, and she re they refused my reports because they said my mother is not in Europe. So because of that, they can't accept my reports. The police, they are, they are there to protect in the time of trouble, when you have some situation that you cannot help yourself out. So they are supposed to help you. My mother is very dangerous for me. So that is why I run to police to help me. But they refuse my report. It's too far for them. So they can't do anything. My name is Grace. I left my country, Nigeria, in 2016 to Europe. My madam brought me to Europe. I passed through the sea, Libya, to Europe and it was very difficult for me to arrive in Europe passing through the desert. And when I arrived to her, she made me stay with her for two weeks happily and after two weeks she told me I have to start working in the street. I was surprised because this was very difficult for me and it was like a new life for me. I was working in the street for four months. A friend of mine, she told me about uh, seeking for asylum and having my papers in the country so I can be legal. So I went to seek for asylum for, and they gave me the Walmart papier, paper. So my madam find out about this, that I want to look for paper and she believed that if I have my papers, I would not be able to pay her money anymore. So she took me off the street after four months. My madam later, she took me to the house and where she organized all the girls like me. They work in the house and the men come to them and work with them in the house. There were many girls in the house. The house was a very big apartment. We were up to six in the house. When you were sleeping, maybe somebody have a client when I was staying in the house. Maybe my colleague, she have a client, somebody to work with. She have to wake me up to say she wants to use the room. And maybe I have a client too. I have to work. It's a, it's, I work from morning to night, morning to night, because it's in the house. There was no time to rest because in the street it was even different because I go to work in the evening and come back home and sleep till afternoon and go back in the evening but in the house I work every day and every time I cannot choose the client it's anybody that come I don't know how my madam organized it but the client just come and it's like uh, it's a house for girls that work and this man know about it. The client decide who they want to work with. Of course you cannot refuse because you need the money, you need to pay your madam. 
you need to pay her money. You're even praying for more clients so you can pay your money quickly and leave the bad place. For a very long time, I was not free to leave the house. I was always indoors. If we're sick, my madam, because we don't even have papers to go to the hospital or to see a doctor. If we are sick, my madam should prescribe some medicine for us and I remember when I was pregnant and when I was pregnant, um, when I was working I got pregnant because um, I was raped by one of my clients and my madam, I told her about it, she didn't care about it and she didn't even bother to give me medication or anything to see if I if I'm so I will not be sick. So I got pregnant and after one month and few weeks she found out I'm pregnant and she gave me some medicine by herself. And this was this hurt so bad that I was bleeding and at the point of death. But I survived.